34 said, Jesus answered them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Whosoever committeth sin is the servant of sin. Whosoever committeth sin. The word committeth is a prolonged form of the absolute primary, which means to do. Therefore, committeth means to commit continuously. When you see committeth, it means to commit continuously. This is saying that whosoever practices sin becomes entrapped, ensnared, imprisoned by it. The person who committeth, the person who practices sin becomes a slave of sin. This is one of the basic principles of the scripture that must be understood. That those who are not living free in Jesus are living under bondage as slaves. Even when Jesus was speaking in his day, the uppity religious folk of his day did not understand this. We be not the children of bondage. How do you say that you will make us free? Well, because you might not be under bondage by a government. You might not be in slavery to another nation. That doesn't mean that you are not enslaved. For the person who practices sin is in fact the servant of it. In fact, the slave of it. And this world is enslaved to sin, living the sin lifestyle. I'm talking about liars who are lying and intend to lie. Thieves who have stolen and intend in the future to go forth stealing. I'm not just talking about having committed a sin. I'm talking about those who committeth sin. I'm talking about practicing sin. Uh, if you've been at Bible study recently, you know I'm talking about a condition called wickedness. Uh, it is the heart and the mind that has embraced the sin lifestyle. Well, I don't know about you, but I don't like the idea of being a slave to anybody or anyone. Look at verse number 34 and 30. Five, or rather 35 and 36 it says and the servant abideth not in the house forever but the son abideth ever if the son therefore shall make you free you shall be free indeed now uh, this is speaking in terms of authority the slave doesn't own the house. So the slave doesn't have authority over the house. The slave lives in the master's house until the master says otherwise. The master owns the house and therefore has authority over the house. Now everybody want to have power. Uh, we'll sing about it. I need your power, power Lord. Your Holy Ghost power, power Lord. Everybody want power. But the master is the only one who truly has power because he owns the house. See, when you go to your house, you can put the coffee table where you want it. But when you come to my house, you won't find a coffee table. And I don't have to have one. I don't care what you're talking about. This is my house. The master owns the house. And they can put what they want where they want it. And they can throw it in the dumpster if they decide they don't want it. Well. Psalm 24 verse 1 and 2 says, The earth is the Lord's. And the fullness thereof. The world. And they that dwell therein. That's the people, y'all. 
God not only owns the earth, he owns the people on the earth. I said ownership. He can do what he can do what he wants to do with you. He can put you in heaven, he can cast you in hell. He has all rights. This world gets you twisted. We think that we have uh, human rights with God. No, God can do whatever he wants to do. He, he has chosen to make salvation available because he wanted to, but he could have just wiped us all out and started over. You ought to thank God for just the opportunity to be saved. Psalm 24 verse 2 says, For he hath founded it upon the seas and established it upon the floods. The reason God has rights, the reason God has authority, the reason God is the master of the house is because he has founded it. He is the founder of this earth, not just the founder of the church. He's the founder of the dirt that the church sits on. Uh, he is the founder and the establisher of the air in your lungs, uh, and he's the establisher of the lung with the air in it. You understand what I'm saying? God has all right, all might, all power, and all authority over everything and everybody on the earth. A lot of people don't like God's rules. God doesn't care if you don't like God's rules. God is the master. He didn't tell you to like it. He told you to do it. When he said, thou shalt not steal, he meant thou shalt not steal. He didn't mean under these circumstances and, you know, unless it goes, no, he said, thou shalt not steal. And he said, thou shalt not bear false witness. He said, take that lying tongue out your mouth. God is not playing. He is the master of the house. He makes the rules. So if you want to live by your own rules, then you need to create your own universe. But now here's the problem. You can't use any of the stuff that God put in this one. You got to come up with your own nothing to start with. And then out of your own nothing, you got to bring something, but you can't use God's stuff. So until you can make your own universe, you're going to have to live in this one and abide by God's rules. Somebody say he's the master. Only one has authority over the house, and that's God. And only the one who has authority of the house can free the slaves thereof. Which is to say, a slave cannot free himself. Because a slave is the property of the owner. You know what that means? That means that... Even though we were born in slavery under sin, you were born with the inability to free yourself from the sin you were in. And even if you could model your life into a, uh, a life that reflects positive morals, and everybody on this earth can call you a good person, even a good person does not have access to heaven unless they be delivered from the slavery that they're in. You know why? Because there is no man that is free from sin except Jesus Christ, the righteous. This is why the text says, the servant abideth not in the house forever, but the son abideth ever. You see, the servant doesn't abide, meaning live, in the house forever because the slave doesn't own the house. But the son lives forever. Uh, which is to say the son lives in the house forever. Why? Uh, because the son is the inheritor of the house. Uh, the son has authority over the house. Um, the son is empowered to loose and change anything in the house. Uh, because I came here in sin, uh, because I lived my life in sin, uh, because I was not a son, but I was born a slave under sin. Uh, so I had no power to change my own heart. Uh, I had no power to change my own destiny. Uh, I had no power to change my own purpose. Uh, I had no power to loose myself from the pains of death. Uh, I had no power to heal myself. Uh, so I needed somebody who was born with intrinsic power. 
Uh, I needed to find somebody who had innate power in the house. Um, I had to hook up with somebody who had authority in the house. Uh, I came here and had to deal with depression. Uh, I came here and had to deal with anxiety. Uh, I came here and had to deal with fear. Uh, and though I could find things to medicate myself, uh, but even the things you found to do to medicate yourself, it didn't take the stress away. Uh, even the things you found to do to medicate yourself. Uh, but it didn't remove the, the pain from the inside. Because uh, you've still been scarred by the things mom and daddy said. Uh, you've still been hurt by the things your brothers and sisters said. Uh, you still got a problem in your mind because of the environment you grew up in uh, that made you feel that you were less than somebody else, um, that made you feel that you were worthless, uh, that made you feel like you had to look out for yourself and not for your brother and sister. Uh, you still came here and nobody taught you how to lie, but you found yourself lying. Uh, even when you didn't want to lie, but you found yourself trying to cover up your tracks because uh, you were embarrassed about the things you were doing. Uh, you were embarrassed about your fornicating uh, because we understood internally that fornication is one of the uh, things of sin uh, that will drag us down to the pit of hell. Uh, and I wanted to be free, uh, but even though I knew that the word was righteous, uh, I couldn't find out how to free myself. Uh, and so I say with Paul, Oh, wretched man that I am, who will free me from this body of death? Who will loose the hold of sin off of my life? Who will break the shackles of my slavery to rebellion off of my life? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. If you're glad that you got somebody to call on, somebody put your hands together and say, yes, Lord. Uh, uh, I couldn't find nobody. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I looked to my left and I looked to my right. I couldn't find nobody. Couldn't find nobody who could help me. Couldn't find nobody in the pew who could answer my prayer. Couldn't find a preacher that could save my soul. But oh God, I thank I thank you, Lord. I found somebody. You see, the sun abides forever. The sun has authority to put cancer out of the house. Uh, the sun has authority to put depression out of the house. Uh, the sun has authority to put poverty out of the house. Uh, the sun has authority to put fear out of the house. Uh, you might like fear in your house, uh, but Jesus don't have no fear in his house. Uh, for God has not given you the spirit of fear, uh, but of power uh, and of love uh, and of sound mind. Uh, somebody say thank you, Lord. Uh, yes, Lord. As long as you practice sin, you are a servant, a slave of sin. You can't emancipate your own self. And you were born into sin, born into slavery, which has held you captive all of your life. You were born a servant in the house, having no authority to make a real change. And so the heart starts to cry out, God, I want a real change. Lord, I don't want lip service. Lord, I don't want to just be saying hallelujah on Sunday and cussing out my co-worker on Monday. But God, I need a real change. Uh, it's not just about putting on a suit, uh, but God, I want to put on a robe of righteousness. Uh, Lord, I'm seeking a real change. Uh, not just stopping the habit of drinking, uh, but Lord, I want you to take drinking out of my heart. Uh, oh, I want a real change. Uh, somebody say, God, I want a real change. Uh, we were not able. <laughs> to change ourselves, but thank God there is a son who lives forever. Somebody say, thank God. That was weak, y'all. Somebody say, thank God. 
<laughs> there is a son <laughs> who lives forever <laughs> and by the power <laughs> of a limitless life <laughs> he stands forever <laughs> to bring out a shift <laughs> in your life <laughs> he lives forever <laughs> to answer your prayer <laughs> he lives forever <laughs> to turn back the devil <laughs> he lives forever <laughs> to heal your body <laughs> he lives forever <laughs> to bring you out <laughs> somebody say yeah uh -huh. if the son therefore <laughs> shall make you free <laughs> you shall be free <laughs> indeed <laughs> You shall be free. Somebody pat yourself and say, I shall. I shall be free. The devil don't have a chain strong enough to hold you. You shall be free. The devil don't have a shackle big enough to bind you. You shall be free. The devil don't have a prison fortified enough to keep you. You shall be free. Because the master said, if the son makes you free, you shall be free indeed. Now the devil's still lying because he's the father of lies. He wants to make you believe that you don't have a right to be free. Well, if it wasn't for the son, the devil would be right. But we've got the son, and his name is Jesus. And he died on Calvary to make you free. He died on Calvary for you and for me. He died on Calvary to break the chains, to loose the shackles. He died on Calvary so you can go and come out of the dungeon. Somebody say yeah. You shall be free. The sun has made you free. You're sitting here free today. You're sitting here with all the freedom you ever going to need. You shall be free because Jesus died to make you free. He got back up early on Sunday morning with all power, with all authority, with all might in his hands. And he's got the right to set free every slave. He's got the right to set free every servant. He's got the right to set free every man, every woman, every boy, every girl, red and yellow, black and white. We're all precious in his sight, and you shall be free indeed. Somebody say yes. Now listen, I'm pretty well done. I hope you got with me already because I'm about ready to get out of here. But now I just got to drop for you the prophetic word. This is the word of the Lord for your life right now. God said, keep praying. He said, you keep praying that I would deliver you. You keep praying that I would bring you out. But I have already knocked the prison doors off the hinges. I have already broken every chain. I have already made you free indeed. Now you must choose to come out. Somebody say yes, Lord. Uh, okay, listen to me. Jesus already uh, broke the shackles off of you. Uh, he broke the shackles off your feet. Uh, but uh, you've got to put forth your own effort. Uh, you have to get up uh, off of that dungeon floor uh, and come out. Uh, he already opened the door. Uh, why are you still sitting in the corner? Uh, 
He already healed you. Why are you still crying? He already defeated the enemy. Why are you still cowering and afraid? God said, get up and come out. Get up and come out. You are already made free. Yeah. Listen to me. Why are you still in that cotton field? 2,000 years ago, huh, Jesus hung on the cross huh, and made his emancipation proclamation. Huh. Jesus said, huh, it is finished. Huh. Come on out. Huh. You've been made free. Huh. You wait for somebody to come by huh, and give you deliverance. Huh. Jesus delivered you at the cross. Huh. Jesus delivered you at the altar. Huh. Jesus delivered you in the pool. Huh. Jesus delivered you with his Holy Ghost. Huh. If the Son make you free, huh, you shall be free. Huh. Indeed, huh. well, he made you free. Huh. Come on out. Huh. Come on out. Huh. Come on out. You don't have to pick huh, the devil's cotton no more. Huh. Come out. Huh. You are already free huh, from anxiety. Huh. Come out. Huh. You are already free from bitterness. Huh. Come out. Huh. You are already free huh, from sickness. Huh. Come out. Huh. You are already free huh, from alcohol. Huh. Come out. Huh. You are already free from drugs. Come out. You are already free from fornication. Come out. You are already free from sin. Come out. Come out. Come out. Somebody say, come out. Come out with your hands up. Come out with a praise on your lips. Come on out and give them glory.